martial arts and acting kind of created the duality of my, my, my craft because on one hand you have to be precise, do it one way, and you have to have it perfect for martial arts. But when then it comes to acting, I learned to let go of all that and let it be true and let it be original and let it be creative. So I kind of have best of both worlds on that and so it kind of created something that I'm really, really proud of with my acting. Kieran Tamondong, hello and welcome to So Janelle. Hello, how are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for welcoming us to your lovely home as well. And thank you for giving us, this is his very first interview with a Filipino outlet. And if he looks familiar, it's because you've seen him before. You've seen him on the hit series, Netflix hit series, Dahmer. Wow. How did that series change your life? You know, that's, that series came as a shock. Once I booked the role, you know, it was, it was a huge shock to me and my family. And we weren't really sure what to do with it because, you know, you book an, a Netflix show and it's an un, unlike anything you've ever seen before. Um, but you take it with great pride and great caution. And, you know, I come back to my parents and I, I just thank them for everything they've done because, you know, my hard work doesn't, doesn't go anywhere without their hard work as well. You mentioned hard work. It, it's, you know, for people who are thinking, wow, sh he booked something big. I know it's years and years and years of preparation mm -hmm. because this uh, wasn't your first rodeo, so to speak, right? Because you've been in shows before, even in commercials. Tell us about your acting journey. So basically, my acting journey came a little later in my childhood. I didn't really know that I wanted to be an actor right out the gate. Uh, I actually grew up most of my childhood in the martial arts industry. I kind of started out with just karate and I did that as a sport just for fun but eventually it kind of evolved into a competitive sport for me to enjoy and use as a gateway for me to like use performances uh, because I really enjoy you know putting on performances for people but I also wanted to know and explore different avenues of performances that I could really enjoy and so acting came about when I, my, me and my dad came across this open call audition for Skechers and we, we didn't think we would get it it was just something fun that we could possibly do we, we had a free day so, you know, I show up to the audition and there's about 15 to 16 other guys that look like me and they're like, okay, we need one person who can do, do the acrobatic gymnastic um, flips and everything and they just need to be a good fitting role for this look. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I, I booked the role and I have to work on this next Skechers commercial for two days and they want to work with me just for a 30 second commercial, very simple. Mm -hmm. But those two days were just so mesmerizing for me. Like it was just a complete shock and different from what I was so used to. And I just knew from those two days, like this is a job that I could completely enjoy doing just for the rest of my life and I could never get tired of. Right. Um, so eventually we get management and we get more shows and I get a call from uh, an NBC producer that they want to show me on a show called Little Big Shots with Steve Harvey and Ellen DeGeneres. And they're like, hey, we want you to come in on the show and we want you to showcase your martial arts performances. And so I do that and it sort of propelled me to have my own little, um, acting profile in a way mm -hmm. uh, so I can finally be in the acting industry so now that I'm here I'm really really glad for all those things that I've done before because it just it, we just did them on a whim and you know you never know where they lead you I think suffice it to say that the acting bug has hit you mm -hmm. and now booking this big uh, series um, is just a testament and also an affirmation I suppose of the path that you're taking in, in, right. the, in the acting industry right yeah your role is actually very significant in the series because mm -hmm. you play the role of Conorak Synthasm phone yes right yes <laughs> and Dahmer it's a serious role, it's a serious mm -hmm. series. Um, how did you prepare for it? Um, you know, after I got the role, preparation was the first thing that was on my mind because I, I knew that I would be working with very professional actors and a very professional crew. I couldn't go in there not knowing everything, mm -hmm. you know? So starting off with Google searches, I learned everything about my role mm -hmm. as a character, but also Laotian culture, mm -hmm. so everything. Uh, a little bit of Jeffrey Dahmer, but mostly about Laotian culture, so I could really immerse myself mm -hmm. in everything, so I could really get into the, the personality of my character. Yeah. But also, they had, they had referred me to a Laotian culture coordinator, who also immersed me with everything, and like the linguistics and the culture and everything. Just we we would just talk about food right. and everything, and there were a lot of similarities to like just. Filipino culture, right. you know, we're very family oriented and we're very respectful for one another. So I was really glad that I was able to like learn all these things in preparation for just a role. 
Mm -hmm. Was it anything that you expected when you were there doing the acting scenes and all that? How many takes did it, did it take? And like just things like that. Can, what can you share with us? Behind <laughs> the scenes, it was nothing that I could have expected. I mean, I was going at it with just full intent to you know bring the best that I could possibly bring and bring my own originality and creativity. But then you learn that like with all these professional actors and like all these amazing people around you, they're treating it as seriously, if not more seriously than I am, because they want to get their their roles as precisely and accurately as possible. Mm -hmm. But you know, I had I had some amazing bonds that I created. I think that's been one of the best things that came out of this show was that I still have connections with everyone from crew to actors um, that I'm still keeping in contact with. And we still hung out, hang, hang out to this day. And you actually you actually had direct communication with Ryan Murphy as well. Yeah. Uh, talking about your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Can you share that with us? So Ryan Murphy essentially wanted to trim my hair down a little bit so I could fit the look that he was going for. Uh, he wanted to adjust my hair length because it adjusts how young I look. Mm -hmm. um, and just before you know, he sent me to the hairdressers and they're about to cut my hair, he walks into the trailer and goes, no. No, I think your hair is okay. I think it gives you a little bit of a younger look, a little more wild look. So we'll keep it the way it is. And I was like, right. okay, cool. <laughs> and so he got to keep my look and it turned out exactly the way that I wear it now into the show, which doesn't happen often. So I was really glad for that. But you know, he, all, he was also telling me um, and all the rest of the crew and Evan Peters and all the actors, like how serious of a role this was and how he, he envisions um, what he wants for the show to be very accurate and very respectful because he knows what he's creating and he knows what he's going into. So he, he really pressed that into us and you know, he's just a great guy overall. Rejection is always going to be a part of the acting life. Unfortunately, <laughs> the audition process is a good way to learn that rejection will happen and you have to let it, let it just subside because there are so many unknown factors with acting mm -hmm. that are just outside your control, you do not have control of. So you just focus on yourself and you focus on your craft and that's what's going to drive you to do better. Because right. if you focus on the wrong things at the wrong time, you're not going to go anywhere with your acting because you're trying to appeal to certain people without appealing to yourself first and making yourself feel better with your acting. Talking about the actors, there's also another Filipino actor in the series who actually plays your brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like seeing another Filipino on set? How much did you and Brayden um, bond? So it was honestly a little weird. The first time I saw Brayden, I knew that he saw me and we were kind of just like awkward. We were kind of testing the waters. We didn't say much to each other because he was with his group, I was with my group. But eventually we started talking and everything kind of just like boom 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 exploded with like just good conversations because mm -hmm. I find out he's Filipino and he has so many similarities to me that like it was just a complete brotherhood right. between two actors and I think that's what really like strengthened both of us and we're, we're really good friends now just because of that so show so I'm really thankful that you know Ryan Murphy gave me the opportunity to be on the show to meet all these amazing people right. such as Brayden. Right, so tell me about the Filipino snacks or food on set <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Filipino snacks or food that you and Brayden shared with each other, uh, you know, if any. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Filipino food or snacks but I did bring this one little candy called Mani Gold okay. uh, to set and it's, it's a little tamarind candy that mm -hmm. is a little spicy when you bite into it. It's a candy that you can't stop eating. It's so kind of like him. sweet and salty, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. And kind of chewy, the Texture. A little chewy, a little rough, but then like it goes down pretty easy. And yeah. me and Brayden probably finished about four boxes of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. And we too. also got the rest of the uh, Laotian family to try them out, and right. they were finishing boxes as well. <laughs> so I would bring them to set every time. So what was it like? Um, sitting there and actually watching the very first time. Did you see rough cuts or did you see it the actual show already? I saw very small snippets from backstage. Uh, they would replay the footage um, sometimes, but I never really got a clear cut depiction of what it would come out as. And you know, my, my family wasn't allowed to come with me to set, so they weren't allowed to see anything because I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And you know, during the peak um, pandemic, uh, they have everyone taking certain precautions mm. so that you know nobody gets COVID. You were it, it, it all, almost in a bubble, right? Pretty much. Uh, only those necessary who were necessary to be there had to be there. So you couldn't bring anyone. Yeah, yeah. so I, I really didn't get a full uh, I didn't really get to fully capture what we, we just created on set. Right. So the first time we watched it on the big screen, I was so nervous because every time I act, I'm a little hesitant on the way that I provided my lines. 
And I'm just like a little scared, but when it came up, I was like, this is probably the best thing I've ever done so far. <laughs> right. And my parents, my family, my friends were super, super like supportive and they were telling me like, hey man, you did an amazing job, like right. better than I ever could have expected. And it really hit close to home for me. Right, and it's so different from what you've done before. Like you're talking about the Skechers commercial, mm -hmm. you were portraying a, a fictional character. Right. And even with the other show with Steve Harvey and uh, Ellen DeGeneres, the one that's that they produced, yep. um, you were being a martial artist, yeah. which is like almost similar to you. This is totally different. It's a character, but it's not just a fictional character. It's a true to life character, mm -hmm. like, you know. Yeah, that's why I'm really hesitant on calling it a character because this was a real person. Mm -hmm. And so I try and give my utmost respect for everyone uh, mm -hmm. doing this role. I love that. And so what's, what's next for you? Well, right now, I'm currently a college student in uh, Northridge, uh -huh. so I'm, I'm studying in kinesiology. I'm a junior, I'm a junior year, and I want to hopefully be a PT someday. So I'm, I'm studying to be a PT, but I'm also following my dream of being an actor. So everything is going well with that, and I just, I want to work in, work in the industry on both ends, but I'm also still keeping up with my martial arts. I'm still training at home, and I'm training at the dojo. Um, you know, because training for 13 years, you want to keep that kind of right. physique, right? Yeah. And I'm working a little more on my health. Okay. So I started bodybuilding a little more. I play volleyball and I go snowboarding as often as I can. Uh, but I'm, almost, I'm also teaching martial arts to the young kids who are now at my local dojo. So I'm now teaching what I've been taught.